Good afternoon. It's David Zeline and Chris Scully from Drive. And today we have special guest Wade with Monaco Motors with us. Welcome, Wade. Thank you very much. Thanks so, for having me. Yes. it's uh, Now, Wade's a long-term client of Drive. I think he started back in 1997, 98, was it, Wade? 97. I signed up in 1995 for the first uh, seminar and didn't yeah. make it didn't make it until 97. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny how that happens. You know, but at that point in time, what we well, that's what we call shop happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> so life life began in '97. <laughs> life began in '97. So tell us a little about a little bit about your shop, um, how you got started into it, Wade, and then of course, you know, what brought you to drive and um, and you know, what do you continue to do with drive? Well, it goes back way back. I mean, I started in this business when I was 17. It was a passion of mine. And uh, at 17 years old, I, you know, I basically had a desire to, to get into the car industry. And it, you know, that desire and passion still holds true today. And when I got into the business, I was a technician. I started as a technician, garage helper, sweeping the floor, mopping the floor and <coughs> taking direction. And I worked for a, a staff of German guys. Uh, this was in Santa Monica and they were from Germany and uh, their English was pretty broken. They, you know, they had a little language barrier and I think I was the only English speaking uh, person in the shop. <laughs> wow. And uh, yeah. So, you know, it went from there. Uh, that was actually a Mercedes Benz specialty shop. And I worked for them for quite some time. And then I, I left them and went to work, uh, actually working on uh, Volkswagens and Porsches. And I did that for many years. And, and then, uh, I uh, had a desire to get into just strictly specializing in Porsche. So I went, went to a Porsche shop, worked there for a good many years. And then that was in West LA. I worked there for five, five years. And then from there, I got recruited by a guy that was from uh, Switzerland. And he, he had a place called Beverly Hills Sports Cars. And I went to work for him. He uh, stole me away from the Porsche shop and asked me if I wanted to uh, endeavor into uh, Ferraris and exotic cars. And I told him I knew nothing about Ferraris or exotic cars, but he was so impressed with the way I did a vehicle inspection that uh, he made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So I went to work for him and did Italian cars. He taught me Italian cars and Lamborghinis, Ferraris. And I got into other exotic uh, European cars, Rolls Royce and um, Maserati. And from there, I, uh, I still had a desire to open my own place. And I ended up opening my own place in 1991. Uh, my goal was to be a shop owner. And uh, I looked around and looked around for a property. And I found a property out in the San Fernando Valley, which was out of my... Uh, out of my uh, realm of where I worked. And I was always working over in West LA, Santa Monica, Beverly Hills. But now I'm over here in the San Fernando Valley, found a building that was really nice and beautiful and a uh, brand new building, new construction. It impressed me. And I just took the risk and dove in and had a thousand square feet when I first started. And then in 1995, I uh, was approached by Management Success, and I ended up going to, well, I didn't go right away. <laughs> I uh, continued working. I had my toolbox all open and uh, turning wrenches and, you know, just doing the work. And by that time, I had, I think I had one employee. And he ran the front office, took the appointments, and I did the work on the cars. And then a friend of mine signed up for the same seminar that I did. He signed up in 97. I signed up in 95. I prepaid for it. 
he convinced me in 97 to go and do the seminar. So I ended up locking my toolbox and went to the seminar. And then from there, you know, it was an eye opener, you know, and really opened my eyes. And Mike Lee, who was the founder of Management Success, was the uh, speaker. And he was the one that was giving the seminar. And it impressed me so much, you know, in the end, uh, at the end of the seminar, they they talked a little bit further about, you know, education and, you know, getting educated in all areas of, of the automotive business, uh, which basically I had no education whatsoever, had no education of running a business or looking at numbers or looking at statistics or anything. So it really impressed me. I was really impressed by Mike Lee and I signed up and signed up with management success. And from there, you know, my life forever changed. And uh, I was op opened to a lot of the business side of the, uh, of the business and looking at all the nuts and bolts of the business, how to run a business, you know, about it, hiring employees, about looking at statistics, tracking statistics, you know, writing hats, writing policies. And I learned everything about from management success then and to drive because management success basically uh, was renamed and reformatted uh, into drive. And so I continue with drive and uh, that's been really great. You know, I actually have signed up all my employees, you know, for training for this year. And uh, some of my employees have already done some of the training. I've re-educated myself on some of the training, you know, and I've learned that, you know, the number of, number of times over means certainty. And, you know, for me, it's all about, you know, remembering and, you know, knowing, uh, what to do in certain situations, you know, in business and handle how to handle certain situations. Uh, it's really important to me and it's important to uh, the well being of my business. So it's good to be here and thanks for having me here. Okay, great. So awesome. I have a question for you, Wade. It's um, the question is, is that you've been, you've been working with a coach, you've got a lot of training and everything. Over the years now, did you do everything your coach told you to do when they told you to do it? Or did you have some times where you drug your feet on a few things? And what, what would you say to somebody that made <laughs> or, or, or right push now? back or push, <laughs> or push back, back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or procrastinate? <laughs> yeah, all of the above. But yeah, yeah, procrastination. Yes. Uh, at one at once upon a time, I, I said, I'm going to change my middle name to procrastinator. <laughs> But uh, no, it, you know, I think all those things have, have occurred, you know, and, you know, I think uh, more than anything, I think it, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's about letting go and it's about, you know, going with the suggestions and going with the flow. You know, I can tell you, you know, firsthand that, you know, everything that I've learned here, you know, works because I've tested it. I've tever, I tested it every, every which way, you know, procrastinating, putting it off. Uh, you know, there was, there was fear, a little bit of fear factor in there. There was a little bit of, you know, uh, I'm best served as, as a technician, I'm best served as a service writer. Uh, there's that thinking and uh, that's all changed. You know, the thinking has changed, you know, that my actions have changed. So I'm taking action in a different way today. You know, I always thought I was my best technician. I always thought I was my best service writer. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've come to learn that, you know, I'm best served working on the business. I'm best served being the executive of the business. That's awesome. Now, we've had a number of uh, shop owners on this show, and many of them have mentioned that at some point during their coaching or their training, there was this aha moment where things just sort of fell into place and they, for lack of a better way of saying it, they got it and things started to smooth out for them in their shops. 
Did you have anything like that as you went through the, you know, through your coaching and training? Oh yeah. Uh, a number of times, you know, I've, I've been in different stages, you know, uh, with my business, you know, I've been in stage three, stage four, um, you know, I've, I've been in a, you know, and I've, the business has gone, I mean, I've been here for 31 years. So since 1991, you know, the business has gone through some, you know, some changes, you know, sure. not, not everybody's going to be with you for the entire 31 years. Although I do have a technician that's been with me for 29 years. So, wow. Yeah. And a lot of my employees are, have been here for a very, very, very long time. And I do have a few new people, but, um, you know, before the pandemic, you know, I used to take, <laughs> before the pandemic, I used to, my goal was always to take two vacations a year, you know, and I love traveling. That's my passion is traveling. So since the pandemic, we've been super, super busy. And since the pandemic, I haven't done any traveling for the obvious reasons. And so, you know, today, um, today, now that, well, I mean, still, we have the pandemic going on, but, you know, and I still haven't done any tra <laughs> traveling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I can't wait till we get to that place where, you know, we can travel. See, the point, the problem is, is that I, when I travel, I like to go on cruise ships. I love traveling on cruise ships. I love unpacking once and seeing the world. And I yeah. love being, I love being on the water. But uh, back to, to David's question. Uh, could you repeat that question again, David? Well, I think we we're talking about the aha moments yeah. uh, you may have had along the way. Like, you know, I, I know with my shop, there's just one day and you, you, you're going through everything. And ours was, we were actually submitting to become masters. And we sat down and started looking at the numbers and the graphs over a three, four, five year period. And, and, and then it hit, it hit you all at one time. Wow. I didn't realize how much we'd grown in that period of time or because, you know, you're doing it step by step with your coach. And there's smaller steps to what you can handle as a shop owner. But when you put the whole picture over a four or five year period, or in your case, over a, a 20 year period with drive, it, I'm sure there were some moments you're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to I got to tell you, um, right now we're we're on track to having our best year ever in business right now. And, uh, you know, looking at the numbers and everything, you know, and looking out another six months, because, you know, right now, we, you know, we just finished the first quarter of the year. Right now we're into the second quarter of the year. And by June, which is next month, you know, if everything stays on track, you know, we, sh we should be, you know, our goal this year is to hit. 2 million in gross sales. And, you know, we've been always hovering around 1.4, 1.5, but this year it's looking like we're going to hit uh, 2 million in gross sales. That's wow. Awesome. What, what changed that, that got you through that ceiling? Well, I turned a lot of things over. I've turned a lot of things over to drive. I've turned my website over to drive. Um, that's, that's helped out tremendously. Uh, that was, I mean, everything, everything as far as changes that I've made, like in the last year and a half, mm -hmm. have, have made the difference. And uh, the website, you guys are handling my website. And, you know, that's made a big change in my life and the way things are done around here. Because I used to collaborate, I used to collaborate with a graphic artist. And, um, you know, I always enjoyed, you know, the, uh, the creative part of that, you know, I've always enjoyed that. And I, I still continue to create specials, you know, with him for my business, but, uh, he was handling the website and the, the website wasn't being, you know, kept up. There's a lot of, a lot of things that need to be kept up on a website, you know, continuously, you know, right. plus the blogs, I have blogs with you, you guys, you know, on the website. You know, the, uh, the website's kept up to date, 
which is fabulous. Plus, you know, there's a way for customers to submit questions. There's ways for customers to uh, request to be, you know, on the email list and, you know, be on our mailing list. And uh, so that's, that's helped out tremendously. We get a lot of requests. We even get regular customers that are communicating through to us through the website, through our website. That's I was actually great. working on that today on some of them, but uh, that's all been tremendous. It's been great. And, uh, you know, all the, uh, the Google ads and stuff like that have been great that you guys have been doing for us. We really appreciate that. Awesome. Now, earlier you mentioned that you've signed up all of your, your employees for training as well. And I know mm -hmm. that uh, Jennifer was in a class I recently taught. And um, talk about the impact that training your employees is having on the shop. You know, over the years, you know, I've, I've had, you know, people come, people go, uh, especially in the front. Uh, and I've, I've sent over the years, I've sent people from my front office, you know, to the service writer school. And Jennifer just recently took this, redid the service writer school. She did it once originally, I think about it, about a year ago, and then has done it again this year. I've done it three times. And, you know, it's always, you, you always, you know, what you missed the first time is like a movie, you know, what you missed the first time you pick up on the second time. And it's good to hear the information over again. And it, it's really important. That's always been my favorite class that you guys put on is the service writer school. And I can tell you, you know, that every time somebody has ever taken the service writer school, they've always come back, you know, that much more knowledgeable about how to handle the phones, about how to handle price shoppers, you know, how to handle um, every aspect of picking up that phone and talking to a customer, you know, smiling when you pick that phone up and, you know, when, no matter what you're going through, you know, be in that place of, you know, wearing that smile and, and handling customers when they come in the front office, you know, the things that you learn about, you know, having multiple people in the front office and how to handle the people all at the same time, you know, and also having that, that knowledge of the diagnostic check sheet and asking all the questions to get the people in, into the shop mm -hmm. without giving a price. So important. That's great. Um, I have a, I have one more question. Sorry, Chris. And then I, I say this. You mentioned a minute ago that you had a tech that's been with you for 29 years. And right now, finding techs can be challenging for some shop owners out there. And I know Chris and I have talked a ton about the shop culture and everything else. So I was going to ask you a couple of questions. Or how would you sum up the shop culture in your shop? Because you have to have a pretty good culture to keep somebody around for 29 years and loyal to your business. So is that is what kind of culture do you try to inspire with your team and instill within the business? Well, the, the kind of culture around here is basically, you know, uh, we, we want to take care of the customer. You know, we want to take care of their concerns and their needs. And, you know, we actually, and I'm real big on, uh, you know, training and schooling. Um, you know, when we're talking about the front, we're talking about the back. You know, I'm big in both areas as far as training. So, you know, we're all on the same page about, you know, knowledge, taking care of the customer, you know, and, you know, making sure that, you know, the customer is taken care of. And then when they leave here, when the customer leaves here, they leave happy, you know, not, not with any kind of like uh, concerns or scratching their head or they didn't understand. We want them, we want them to understand, you know, and have an understanding when they're walking out the door. We don't want them to be, have a, a question in their, in their mind, you know, when they're leaving here. So as far as the culture goes, you know, there's, there's no yelling, screaming in the shop, you know, there's, there's, there's calm. It's very calm. You know, and I think that filters down, you know, from the top down to the shop, you know, absolutely. 
Yeah. That's great. Um, we have a couple of questions from our audience. Um, first, Lynn wanted to know, um, how many techs and service writers do you have in your shop? I have four techs and I have two service writers. Great. And then um, I, I know a lot of shops are experiencing issues with parts and particularly um, Lynn mentioned she's having trouble getting European parts. Are you having this, those kinds of challenges? And if so, how are you handling those? You know, when the pandemic hit, um, it's quite interesting, you know, uh, because we noticed that around the time the pandemic hit, you know, we couldn't get batteries for certain cars. The dealers didn't have any batteries. Um, we asked them what they were doing. Uh, the BMW dealer up the street, what they were doing, the cars were just sitting until more supplies came in. Uh, the cars would just sit there. Wow. And uh, yeah, no batteries. So oh there was a... <laughs> There was a time period where, you know, that was going on. I'll tell you something else that's still going on with that same dealer is, is that, you know, when the band pandemic started, you know, all of a sudden the phones weren't getting answered at the dealership, you know, the parts department. And that's still going on today. You know, the phones aren't getting answered. So we got to call back not only two times, sometimes three times. It's a recording. It goes into recording and then you got to leave a message and then you got to wait for them to get back to you. But then, you know, that's the local dealer. And then we end up reaching out to some dealers that are not so close to us and, you know, having them deliver to us and we can deal with them directly if we don't, you know, if we're not in a real big hurry for those parts. And that, that actually has worked out for us, but, uh, as far as what the other thing that we've noticed also is, is that it seems as though, you know, these cars, you know, when they get out of a 10 year period, you know, the, the dealers aren't really, uh, you know, they're not really obligated to, to make parts for these cars after a 10 year period. And we've fi have found during the pandemic that that 10 year period seems to be more, more uh, in place than ever before. You know, we're finding that that these cars, if if they're over 10 years old, you know, there's no there's no parts. There's certain parts that are unavailable for them. And that makes it a kind of a challenge. Gotcha. All right. Um, well, I was going to just kind of follow ahead, up on that because there's some pieces that we heard, but it came with Lynn's uh, piece there, though. And I just wanted, this is not so much a question late, but it says just saying a well done with your shop right there, because when I hear a shop that's going to be going to $2 million in sales this year and doing it with four techs, I think that's an impressive thing that all of our viewers need to hear is that sometimes you can't find a tech, but you can be more efficient with the people that you got in your business. And it is very possible to make a shop that is a $2 million shop with four techs. It's about your workflow and how you got everything organized. And I think Wade, you had on it the best. You train everybody in your shop. Yeah. Well, you know, these guys, the crew is a great crew. They have, you know, they have great attitudes. Um, I think, you know, learning, you know, the tone scale earlier at management success and uh, learning uh, to hire properly, you know, it has been a key factor. And, you know, I think uh, culture more than anything is, is key. And I think, you know, there's some, there's some key things, you know, uh, knowing what to look for when you're hiring. I, I learned that from you guys. I have uh, two of my techs are graduates of UTI. They're the, the more recent and newer employees. And I was actually looking for, I was actually looking for techs. I was looking for, you know, techs that had a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge and a lot of training. And, and uh, that wasn't going anywhere for me. And, and then I, 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 changed uh i changed my uh 
whole idea of how I was going to do this. And I, what I ended up doing was is I reached out to UTI and I got, I got a couple training techs and uh, I've been working with them for the last couple of years and they, and they have been great. They've got, they've got great attitudes, you know, they're willing to learn, they're willing to go to school. You know, I've got them signed up and they just came back from an electric vehicle class and, now they're going to a Mercedes training class here in, on June 5th. And uh, I've been working with them closely. And so is the other uh, two techs that have been with me for a very long time. They've been working with them. So, you know, it's, it's coming along. And, uh, you know, they're, they're actually doing a lot of training, training uh, on their own. Uh, I ended up uh, getting all the techs, a training package from ABI. And I, that's a yearly subscription and they have training, uh, training uh, uh, seminars or webinars on their, on their, on their website. And, you know, they've been getting certificates. I got their certificates here right next to me in my drawer here. And uh, I'll pull out a couple. I put them here in a file right next to my drawer, but they just came back from electrical vehicle training class and that's Omar. And then they're doing, uh, they're doing some uh, training through SSF. SSF has some great classes. That's great. So. That's yeah. awesome. Um, you know, I'm tracking all their hours. I track everything in the shop, their billable hours, and you know they're coming. They're they're coming along. That you just brought up a big point there, Layden. I know you track and you use your KPIs and the graphs and everything. I know there's a lot of newer shop owners that we have in our in a drive and everything. And we are teaching them how to use the KPIs, and sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. Like, you want me to track how many numbers? But how many numbers do you track in your shop on a weekly basis right now, would you say? Well, I'm tracking the, the billable hours. I'm tracking the gross sales. Uh, I'm tracking, uh, uh, I'm tracking, you know, money to where money is being distributed, like reserves. Um, I'm tracking, uh, you know, my reserves. <laughs> and uh, I'm tracking uh, our account. And let's see, I'm also tracking uh, new customers, uh, new customers, that's important. It's important to track that, you know, and where they're coming from, I track where they're coming from. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, accounts payable, tracking that. Um, I am tracking, what else am I tracking? Uh, there's a few other things I'm tracking. So you're, you're, you're tracking several different KPIs and everything. And the big question I asked for you, after you got trained and started using them, when you pull up your graphs and you look at it, how long does it actually tell, take you to look through the graphs and say, I know what's wrong, I need to go, or I know what's going right? It's not like a all-day event anymore, is it? No, not at all. I, I know what to look for. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely know what to look for. You know, whether it's whether it's to do with sales, whether it's to do with, you know, car count, um, you know, I, I, I can look at it and look at it over a period of time. I can tell what's, what's going on, you know, if, if it's actually trending in the right direction over a period of time or where it's trending. That's great. So I have to ask this question. Are you looking forward to the expo? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's always great. And uh, the last one before the pandemic, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I I remember seeing David there. I think you were wearing a long jacket and a and a cowboy hat. That was the that was the theme for the for the fun night that we had. So that and that, I, that I always leave up to my wife. She she <laughs> she just comes uh, in and says, "This is what you will dress as." So we. But it is always fun. The theme night, having yeah. fun with 
the awards, the training, everything that goes on yeah. the expo is just great. The networking that I think we you can't you can't find a better place to network with other shop owners. Oh yeah, yeah, you, you know, and I'll tell I gotta I gotta admit, you know, there was there was years where I I missed these fun events. You know, I didn't go. I thought, well, nah, I gotta stay here. You know, I got. I thought I could, I, I thought I could be my best service writer, you know, uh, and, and, uh, you know, that's been my downfall, you know, uh, thinking I need to be the technician. I think I need to be the service writer. That, that was, that was my downfall for quite a few years. And, uh, you know, I, I love service writing. I love turning wrenches. I love being involved in, in cars, but I'm well served, much better well served working on the business and getting it you know, keeping it and getting it on the right track. Well, that's, that's awesome. Awesome and well said, Wade. We are coming up. Amazing how a half hour flies on these. Uh, yeah, no, I talk. feel like we could we could talk for another half hour easily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's been it's been great, man. I, I really appreciate you asking me and having me on today. Yes, it is wonderful to have you here. We appreciate you coming on and spending some time with us. We look forward to seeing you at the expo. We look forward to seeing everybody at the expo. Uh, if you haven't registered yet, register with your consultant. Um, if you have questions about registration, call in to drive. We're, we're, we'll answer all your questions. But we want to see you there and see everybody in person. And let's make this uh, the great event that we know it'll be. I know it will be. They're always fun. Every time, every time I go, I, al I always say, you know, I'm having a great time. And, you know, why, why was it so hard for me to, to remove myself out of my shop? <laughs> <laughs> I, I come back rejuvenated. I come back ready to go. I come back fired up, you know, I'm, my head turns into a different place and yeah, it's, it's, it's fabulous. So it's good to, it's good to get out of the shop and uh, network. Okay, great. Well, thank you for joining us today. And thank you for tuning in, everybody. And have a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you back in two weeks, because we're going to take a little bit of a break from Memorial Weekend next week from Facebook Live. So we'll see you guys, everybody back in two weeks. Have a great weekend. Have a great Memorial Weekend. And we look forward to seeing you live in person at the Expo coming up. All right. Thank you, guys.